So this video refers to um, Lecture 4 and specifically the final section of Lecture 4 looking at distributed loading. So that kind of starts, um, they start discussing the applications around slide 72. Um, but the idea of a distributed load is that maybe you don't know a particular force. So for instance you've got a beam, it could be a shelf, um, and you have a box sat on it, and you don't know um, the force acting at a point, but instead you know, so you don't know that, instead you know that there is a uniform load all the way throughout that box, uniform density perhaps. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to take that and we want to say, okay, that's useful to know sometimes, but we want to be able to represent it as one force acting at a point in that shape um, so that we can make it easier to calculate. Uh, and there's some uh, different ways of doing that. We'll look at one particular technique um, when we're looking at centroids, centres of gravity, um, when you've done a little bit more maths on it. So I'm going to skip over a few slides uh, for now. And if you actually look at slide 78, um, it should be titled Examples uh, and until you learn more about centroids. Um, so we're only going to look at l rectangles and triangular loads. And the rectangular load is quite easy. So a rectangular load, I appear to have stuck with an orange pen. Um, I believe the, uh, the, the question has, oh sorry, the example, has a uniform distributed load. It doesn't have it in a box, but it's on a beam. Uh, and it's 10 kilonewtons per metre. And it's 5 metres long. And we can say, okay, well that's the same as going two and a half metres in and putting a force of 50 kilonewtons, i.e. 10 times 10 kilonewtons per metre times 5 metres. So our resultant is just the um, force per unit uh, length times by the length. And for a rectangle, it's halfway in. So our 50 came from... 5 times 10, and it is as simple as that. When you get to um, triangular loads, i.e. there's more load on one end than the other, it's almost um, as easy, there's only one little extra step, and the example has 600 newtons per metre, and it has a distance of six meters. Now you can see that the, the longer end is 600 newtons per meter. That's not necessarily true of the smaller end, but my resultant, if I was to summarize it as one force, it's going to be 600 times six, because it's a triangle divided by two, 1800 newtons. Where am I going to put it? Well, I'm going to draw it. This is just a rule for triangles. Either um, means the same thing, but either one third of the distance from the large end or two thirds from the small end. So if that's six metres, two metres in, one third from the large end, I'm going to draw my force, 1800 newtons, and that would be my resultant force. Um, and that is distributed loads um, and considering them instead as point loads. That is as hard as it gets. Um, so there is one question. It is a group problem solving question. Um, there is no example prior to that which suggests that it should be easy enough for you to do on your own. Um, I will go through it with you, but if you want to try it on your own first, if you pause the video uh, and then come back to it when, you're, uh, when you've had a go. Okay, so this is the um, distributed loading group problem solving exercise beginning on slide uh, 81. Um, so the first thing I would do is I'd divide it into three unique areas, zones, to make it easier to solve. So I've got region 1, region 2, and region 3. Uh, and what I'm going to do for region 1, it's nice and easy, so we're looking for one resultant force that acts, uh, at, and the distance it would act from, um, from point A. 
So first of all, we need to find resultant forces for each individual region. For region 1, I'm going to have my um, 800 newtons per meter times 12 divided by 2, which is going to be 4,800 newtons. The distance, so that's force 1, distance from A is going to be two-thirds of the 12 metres, so 8 metres, because if you remember it's two-thirds from the smaller end. Similarly, force 2 is going to be, well, force 2 slightly harder, but not much. Um, that there, that red line, represents the height of a 500 newtons per metre line. This extra bit must bring it up to 800, so region 2, the length of my blue line here, must be 300 newtons per metre. So I'm going to have 300 newtons per metre times by the distance, 9 metres, and then divided by 2. So that second force is going to equal 1350 newtons. My um, distance from A, well it's going to be a third of the distance um, from the big end, so one third of nine, three metres in, but my distance from A I'm going to have to add on that initial 12 as well, so 15 metres. So it's going to be 3 metres plus the first 12 metres, 15 metres. And then my force 3 is just simply going to equal 500 times 9. Whoops, not 5 times 9. 500 times 9, which is going to equal 4,500. Distance from A, distance 3, is going to equal um, halfway, so 4.5 metres along that section. So, about here, 4.5 metres. But it's also going to have to add on the extra 12, so 4.5 plus 12, which is 16.5 metres from A. What I've now got to do is I've now got to um, start to work that into one resultant force. Um, but if we simplify our diagram to start with. So my new diagram is going to have A. There's going to be three forces on it. There's going to be 4,800. There's going to be 1,350. And there's going to be 4,500. There's going to be a distance here of 8 metres. There's going to be a distance here of uh, 15 metres. And there's going to be a distance to the final one, which I'll draw underneath, of 16.5 metres. So my resultant force, my sum of my forces, is going to equal my resultant force. 4,800 plus 1,350 plus 4,500, that's going to equal 10,650 newtons. That's just adding the three forces together. My moments about A, the sum of my moments about A, is going to equal 4,800 by 8. That's going to be negative because it's, going anti uh, it's trying to go clockwise. Uh, it's going to be minus 1350 by 15 and minus 4500 by 16.5. So my resultant moment is going to be 132,900 newton meters. So uh, my position from a, the distance that one resultant force, my 10,650 newton force, would have to act from A, will equal 1, 000, sorry, 132,900 divided by the resultant force of 10650, which equals 12.5.
12.5, sorry, 12.5 meters from A. So I could draw one resultant force instead of all the distributed loads, instead of these three forces, I could draw one resultant force that was 12.5 meters from A and it would have a magnitude of 10,650 newtons. So that concludes um, the Lecture 4 video on distributed loading and actually also concludes all of the Lecture 4 lectures, uh, lecture videos. Um, if any other questions arise, if you email me, I'll try and make videos that solve them so that other people can share the solution as well.